Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Hi, I'm Michael Hamula, and thanks for hanging out with us again here at Pulling the Cork. We're at the conclusion of our How to Taste and Talk Wine series. We've covered just about everything there is to know about how to taste and talk wine and how to write a good wine tasting note. But we, we're down to the last thing. And that is, all these scores you see, how are they done? What's the deal with the scoring and, and how do you do it? Now, there, there is no total right or wrong answer when it comes to scoring. We happen to use the 100 point system made famous by Robert Parker. But, you know, there's a lot of other systems out there. There's 20 point scales, there's 30 point scales. I've seen just about every kind of scale there is for scoring a wine. We like the 100 point scale because it seems to fit with what most everybody is comfortable with and most everyone can understand what 90 out of 100 points is. But let's get into the details of how to score a wine. First, a wine gets 50 points just for showing up on your table. Now that might seem like a lot, but when you consider all of the work and the effort, the blood, sweat, and tears that goes into making a wine, that winemakers and wineries put into getting that wine on your table, we think that's worth 50 points. And by the way, since Robert Parker came up with this scale, apparently so does he. The second part of this scale is a wine can get up to 5 points for color and clarity. Really when you're evaluating color, it's kind of like a beauty contest minus the swimwear competition. But there are a few things we need to look for. As we've already talked about in what you see and how to see it, you're looking for color, clarity, and intensity of color. If a wine is a single varietal, meaning that it's coming from one grape, we're looking for varietal correctness in the color. Other factors that might influence the color of the wine are where the grape was grown or how old the wine is when it's actually poured and in some cases even winemaking techniques. With modern technology, it's getting harder and harder to screw up the color of wine than ever, so pretty much most wines are scoring at the four or five point level, though there are some exceptions to that rule. A wine can get up to 15 points for aroma and bouquet. As we talked about in what you smell and how to smell it, there's a bunch of things that you need to think about and there are differences between aroma and bouquet. We can tell a lot about a wine, as we said, when we stick our nose in and give it a good sniff. The intensity, the complexity, the balance of the aromas are all evaluated and described in the tasting note and ultimately scored on a scale of 0 to 15. The more intense, complex, and balanced the, the aromas are, along with varietal correctness if applicable, the better the score can be. A wine can get up to 20 points for flavor and finish. Yes, finally it's in our mouth. Much like the aroma, it's all about intensity, complexity, and balance here as well. And you're also going to evaluate the finish. How long does it last? How complex are the flavors as it's finishing on your palate? How many different kinds of flavors are there when, you're, when it's finishing on the palate? We're also looking for, for mouthfeel. As we talked in what you taste and how to taste it, there are three different kinds of mouthfeel. Light bodied, medium bodied, and full bodied. And then we're also looking at the finish. So all of those things have to play into this 20 point scale. While it's in our mouth, we're also discovering and evaluating the acidity and the tannin structures that are in place. And we're also looking for varietal correctness in the flavor profile. Again, a wine can get up to 20 points here in terms of flavor and finish. A wine can get up to 10 more points for overall quality and potential to age. This is really a difference maker when it comes to scoring a wine. Now this can get a little bit subjective here as well because scoring a wine on overall quality can sometimes be a person to person kind of an endeavor. At Pulling the Cork, and much like Robert Parker's 100 point scale, we score overall quality based on how a wine stack up, stacks up against its peers as well as a wine's potential to get better and improve with aging. For example, if, if a wine has the structure today to age for 10 to 20 years, then its marks for aging potential go up. If 15 years from now we're tasting that same wine and it might only have another three to five years of life in it, the scores for aging go down. So its overall quality and potential to age score might change over time. If appropriate, we always talk about this in our tasting note because as we've always said, no tasting note is complete without the actual description and detailed notes. Just assigning scores really isn't enough. 
So we like to describe a little bit about why a wine might get a 9 on a 10 scale or a 5 on a 10 scale. So again, up to 10 points for overall quality and potential to age well. So that's it. You add up all of these scores and you end up with a score of basically 50 to 100. So you're asking, what are the ranges for scores? Basically, they go like this. An extraordinary wine, one of outstanding character, has all of the components in place that you could ever want. Something that's really stellar is going to score between 96 and 100 points. An outstanding wine is going to score between 90 and 95 points. A very good to excellent wine is going to score between 85 and 89 points. Something that would be considered just good is going to be between 80 and 84. Something that's average is between 75 and 79. And something below average is 70 to 74. Anything that's in that 50 to 70 range pretty much just dumped down the drain. That's our philosophy. So wrapping this all up, we're evaluating a wine on a point scale. 50 points for showing up. 5 points for color and clarity, up to 15 points for aroma and bouquet, up to 20 points for the flavor profile and the finish, up to 10 points for quality and overall ability to age. Add them all up, you get a score of 50 to 100. Thanks for hanging out with us again here at Pulling the Cork. We hope you've enjoyed our How to Taste and Talk wine series. If you ever are interested in going back and learning more about these things, they're all right over here on the right-hand side. You can read all about our Taste and Talk wine series. Until our next episode, thanks for hanging out with us, and cheers. Three minutes and we're out of here. The clock is ticking and we're in the clear. We got three minutes and we're out of here. We got three minutes and we're out of here.